Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So today uh, I'm going to talk about uh, how to onboard Windows subsystem for Linux in Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. So before we uh, do that in action, I want to give uh, some quick uh, uh, overview about what is mean by uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. So if you take any of the Windows operating system, uh, the operating system will have some inbuilt features that you can activate. For example, uh, you can activate Hyper-V features, you can activate TFT client, IIS. So there are list of uh, multiple features available in operating system that you can just uh, enable that features and you can enjoy the capabilities of those features. So like that uh, uh, WSL, the Windows subsystem for Linux is one of the feature available in Windows operating system. You can activate this capability and once you activate this uh, WSL feature in your uh, uh, Windows operating system, uh, you can run uh, the listed uh, supported di Linux distribution, Linux instances in your Windows operating system. So this is very useful tool uh, for uh, developers who want to uh, make use of both uh, Windows and Linux at the same time. Um, so there are uh, uh, the, this WSL instance support. I mean, uh, it, it supports one uh, on some list of uh, supported distributions. For example, it's uh, the Debian, Kali, Ubuntu. So, like this, there are a list of uh, uh, distributions where you can create the uh, WSL instance from uh, in your uh, uh, Windows operating system. So, uh, let me uh, uh, go to the uh, uh, next slide where I'm going to talk about. Uh, uh, how to onboard your uh, WSL instance uh, in your uh, Windows operating system. So before that, let's uh, see how your WSL uh, looks like in the uh, uh, Windows host. So this is my uh, Windows host machine. And uh, here I have already installed my uh, WSL uh, feature inside this machine. But let me show you how I uh, done that. So if you open your uh, Windows feature uh, uh, screen, so here you can activate all, all your required features. So here you need to choose Windows subsystem for Linux. And this is one of the uh, re required uh, feature that you have to activate. And uh, along with that you, have, you can activate Hyper-V. And along with that you can activate a virtual machine platform. So these three are uh, uh, required in order to run your w, uh, WSL on the uh, Windows operating system. So uh, I have activated this, uh, how I can verify whether uh, uh, it is installed on my, my machine or not. So you can make use of the command uh, WSL minus V. So if you enter this command, you can get the uh, the current version running, uh, the WSL version running on your uh, uh, Windows host machine. So the, and, and you want to see what are the uh, uh, list of uh, uh, instance that is available for uh, uh, installation. So for this, I can use this command WSL uh, dash L and hyphen hyphen online. And if you enter this command, so here it will show you uh, what are the list of valid distribution that can be installed on the Windows operating system. So in my case, what I have done is I have installed uh, three instances. Let me list those. So if you see here, uh, I have installed Ubuntu 20.4. I have in installed SUSE. Linux uh, Enterprise and Ubuntu 20.0.4, uh, 22.0.4. So if you if you notice here, uh, it is showing as a default. So it means uh, I have inst uh, I have uh, uh, configured uh, this as my default instance. For instance, if I'm going to uh, start uh, want to start my WSL instance, automatically it will start the uh, 20.4, or else I have to uh, manually specify which instance I want to run in this operating system. I mean in this Windows host machine. So, uh, if I run uh, WSL, it is going to start automatically this uh, particular instance. But if I want to run the other instance, then I can use this uh, command uh, WSL hyphen D, and then I can mention uh, 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 the instance name. Then, if we enter, it is going to uh, open the uh, my instance here. I mean, your 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 uh, Ubuntu twenty two dot zero four instance will be running on this particular machine so you can see here now so let me uh, verify the operating system version for that i am going to use this command so it's giving me uh, i mean uh, version 22.0.4 uh, 22.0.4 so which is the instance that i have uh, uh, 
made I, I have, i'm running on this uh, operating system right now uh, or you can also run similarly you can run the another instance since i have already opened uh, uh, the another instance so let me see what is the version of this so if you see here it's 20. Dot, uh, 20. Dot, uh, 0.4 i mean 20.04 so here it is a uh, 22.04 so these are the two uh, different instances i'm running on my same windows operating system okay so now uh, we have uh, 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 we have uh, see how we have installed the wsl and we have validated the installation now let's see how we can uh, install the uh, windows uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, the defender for endpoint plugin uh, in order to onboard the uh, your WSL instance into the uh, Defender for Endpoint. So for that, what I have to do is uh, uh, there are there are before we start the installation, where there is three prerequisites uh, uh, we need to be make sure before we start the installation. The one is the your WSL version should be uh, 2.0.7 or later. In my case, uh, it is 2.0.9, and your uh, host machine where you are going to uh, configure the WSL should be onboarded into the defender for endpoint in my case yes my host uh, operating system is already onboarded into the defender for endpoint which is my windows 11 machine and this supports only on windows 10 version 2004 or higher or windows 11 so you have to be uh, running on this particular version in order to uh, configure your uh, defender for endpoint uh, plugin on the wsl instance okay so let's uh, jump into the uh, uh, my uh, screen and let me open the uh, my defender portal so here uh, i'm going to uh, go to the section that under the defender portal settings and endpoints and here i'm going to onboarding section here uh, i can select what operating system for i want to do the onboarding process so here in my case there is an option called windows subsystem for linux 2 plugin and once I uh, do select this one, it will give option to download the package. So once I click the download uh, uh, installation package, the package will get downloaded in in your uh, uh, local machine, and you can uh, install this the uh, install this uh, MSI file uh, in your machine, and your plugin will get automatically installed on your system. So I have already done that. So let me go and uh, show you uh, how it will look like. So after you complete the uh, plugin installation, you will be seeing this program on your machine. Microsoft Defender for Endpoint plugin for WSL. So now we have uh, done the installation of a plugin. So let's validate whether the uh, plugin is uh, got installed successfully or not. So let I'm going back to uh, my, my uh, terminal window. Here uh, I have I'm already in uh, Program Files Windows Defender for Endpoint plugin for WSL and Tools. You have to go to this uh, exact location and you have to run the command called uh, uh, health healthcheck.exe. So if you run this command, uh, it, it will show you uh, uh, the, the health status of the uh, plugin. So here uh, my, my WSL version also it is giving me 2.0.9 and my uh, WSL distro is uh, running, it's, it's saying true and the health status is healthy. So now uh, uh, we, we, have, uh, we, have, uh, we have verified that we have validated that the, my installation is successful and uh, the, the health status of the plugin is also healthy. So uh, the you can also do one more uh, thing like uh, you can uh, also include a registry key value to validate the connectivity status for uh, to your MDE services. For example, uh, I, I want to see the uh, uh, my uh, what you call the the MDE connectivity test status here. Then I can what I can do is uh, I can create the uh, uh, rigid, I can create one registry uh, value. For that I, I have I need to open the registry and I need to go to computer uh, HK local machine software Microsoft Windows current version LXS plugins and Defender plugin. So under Defender plugin uh, we can create uh, one uh, D word uh, entry. Uh, so the, the, we need to name exactly same like this connectivity test and uh, uh, a number of seconds a plugin must wait before running the test is recommended value 60 seconds. And once you uh, configure this uh, particular value, uh, what will happen is when, when you run next time uh, the same command, the health uh, check dot uh, exe, you will be uh, having one option like MDE connectivity status, it will show success. So uh, uh, the one, thi one, one thing is if you have configured the value uh, uh, 
uh, here then you then you have to restart your uh, WSL instance uh, so once you restart the, the WSL instance you the MDE connectivity test value also will be uh, show up here in your health check .exe. so this is how you can do the connectivity test so now uh, after you done the uh, in installation and a validation and connectivity test is completed uh, you can also uh, verify whether the uh, the WSL instance got successfully onboarded into the Defender portal. So for that, uh, we can go to uh, our Defender portal, and if you go to the uh, uh, device section where uh, Microsoft Defender and Assets and the device section, you will see all the list of uh, uh, devices which got onboarded uh, into the Defender for endpoint. So here, if you notice, there are two names are showing up here: one with the operating system Windows 11, and another one is the operating system Linux. So here, uh, both both are uh, reporting to the same name. So uh, what you can do is you can go to the filter and you can choose uh, the tag. There is an automatic tag will be created for uh, your WSL instance. In my case, uh, it is WSL2. After I click apply here, so you will be seeing all the WSL instance that is running on your environment. So this is how you can validate the, uh, uh, um, uh, the WSL instance in the uh, portal. So uh, also you have to note uh, note one more thing is uh, the host name of the devices. So previously I was showing that uh, two devices are showing the same name. Uh, so since uh, the, we have configured our WSL instance on my Windows uh, host machine and so it will always use the same namespace uh, to uh, report the telemetry data back to the Defender portal. Okay, so uh, if you click on uh, this uh, device na uh, name, you, you can it will uh, take you to the uh, WSL instance uh, uh, device uh, detail page where you can see the more uh, the more details about that particular instance, and and this uh, device page will not look similar to what you see in your actual uh, the, uh, the regular uh, device pages. So if you notice here, there are multiple uh, uh, tabs are missing here. So uh, this is something uh, uh, you have some limited functionality that you can uh, see inside the WSL instance. Uh, for example, you can able to, uh, uh, it will do only the deduction thing. Uh, if something is a suspicious activity is uh, happening on inside the WSL, it will uh, report uh, back to the WSL uh, 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 in, uh, the device in, uh, entry here. And, and it will not do any of the blocking or remediations thing. At this point of time, it is only doing the uh, deduction thing. So it's observed the uh, WSL instance and it reports back to the your Defender portal. But uh, uh, for example, if you have configured any block rule in your Defender uh, policy, uh, and it is not going to make effective on your WSL instance. Uh, but that isn't something uh, Microsoft might be uh, having in their roadmap, and it might be coming future. Uh, these uh, uh, preventive or blocking capability also will be. Uh, included for the, the WSL instance. So you can also uh, check the uh, alerts and incidents for the WSL incident. So I, I did some uh, quick uh, uh, testing on my uh, WSL instance. I was able to uh, get those alerts uh, inside the instance. And you can also click on the uh, timeline where you can uh, uh, see the uh, the, uh, the almost real time uh, uh, telemetry uh, data uh, information in the timeline section. So uh, uh, this is how uh, you can onboard the uh, WSL instance into the Defender for Endpoint and you can uh, check the uh, events and alerts. Uh, you can use the advanced hunting section uh, to get the details about your uh, device ID, host device ID, the WSL instance information uh, by running this query. So if I run this query, I will, be get, I will be getting the results of my WSL device ID and where it is hosted, the host device ID and the device name. For example, you want to get the more details about the activities that is running inside the uh, WSL instance. For example, you want to get the uh, uh, the curl activity that is happening on one of your instance. So in that in that case, you can uh, run this query and it will uh, list down uh, list out all the uh, curl and wget activities that is happening inside your uh, instance. So thank you so much for joining this video, and I will come up with our next informative content. And until then, bye from me. Thank you so much. Have a great day.